In class activity four, determine the one-sided Z transform of X of N equal A to the N U of N. So this is the summation from K equals zero to infinity of A to the K, U of K, Z to the negative K. And once again, we can replace U of K with a one from K for K equals zero to infinity. So it's a summation from K equals zero to infinity a to the k, z to the negative k, which can also be written as the summation from k equals zero to infinity of a over z raised to the k. As before, we know that the region of convergence has to be a over z less than one, because otherwise the summation will blow up or go to infinity as k goes to infinity. Another way of writing that region of convergence is the magnitude of Z is greater than the magnitude of A. And finally, X of Z is equal to one over one minus A over Z, which equals Z over Z minus A. In class activity five, determine the one-sided Z transform of X of T equal E to the negative A T U of T when x of t is sampled with a sampling interval t. So this is our first example of finding the z transform of a continuous time system where we use sampling to do it. So what we will have here is x of nt is equal to e to the negative a nt u of nt, or in discrete time, we can write this as x of n equals e to the negative a t raised to the n u of n. So the z transform x of z is equal to the summation from k equals zero to infinity, e to the negative a t to the k u of k times z to the negative k. But once again, we know that u of k is a one from k equals zero to infinity. So we can rewrite this as k equals zero to infinity, e to the negative a t raised to the k times z to the negative k, which can be rewritten as k equals zero to infinity, one over e to the a t z raised to the k. So we know that our region of convergence has to be the magnitude of one over e to the a t z less than one, or Z is greater than one over E to the AT. Or finally, we can write this as Z is greater than E to the negative AT. Finally, X of Z is equal to one over one minus one over E to the ATZ. We multiply the numerator and denominator by Z we can write this as z over z minus e to the negative a t. Similar to for Laplace transforms, there's also an initial and final value theorem that will prove to be useful when we start analyzing digital control systems. The final value theorem is used to determine the steady state error for a discrete time control system, and it states that the limit as t goes to infinity of x of t is equal to the limit as z goes to one of one minus z inverse g of z, or the limit as z goes to one of z minus one over z g of z. The initial value theorem is very useful in determining a controller's initial control effort for a discrete time control system. The initial value theorem states that the limit as t goes to zero of x of t is equal to the limit as z goes to infinity of g of z. So let's look at in-class activity seven. If g of t is equal to one minus e to the negative three t u of t, find the final value using the continuous time and discrete time final value theorems. So the limit as t goes to infinity of g of t is one minus e to the negative infinity or one. For g of z, we have z over z minus one minus z over z minus e to the negative 3t, and the limit as z goes to one 
of z minus 1 over z g of z would be equal to the limit as z goes to 1 of 1 minus z minus 1 over z minus e to the negative 3t, which does equal 1, so it is indeed equivalent. In class activity 8, if g of t is equal to e to the negative 3t u of t, find the initial value using the continuous time and discrete time initial value theorems. So first, the limit as t goes to 0 of g of t is equal to e to the 0, or 1. g of z for g of t is equal to z over z minus e to the negative t. And the limit as z goes to infinity of z over z minus e to the negative t, which can be written as the limit as z goes to infinity of 1 over 1 minus e to the negative t over z, which is also equal to 1. And this concludes today's lecture on discrete time systems, z transforms, the initial and final value theorems.